Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Parkinson's disease and anti-Parkinson drugs. Okay, right, so we are currently in the process of discussing the function of the basal ganglia, and we have seen how they are involved in this permission signal, okay, uh, which is needed in order for the secondary motor cortex to develop a motor plan uh, properly and then send it to the primary motor cortex to actually be uh, carried out. Okay, right, so we've seen that in order for uh, the secondary motor cortex to actually be able to send its motor plan to the primary motor cortex, it needs to receive a permissive signal which comes from neurons in the ventral anterior and ventrolateral thalamic nuclei. Okay, now usually the uh, permission signal is not coming to portions of the secondary motor cortex. Okay, so these neurons are not usually active, and the reason they're not usually active is they are innervated by these inhibitory GABAergic neurons, which are in both the internal globus pallidus and also the substantia nigra pars reticulata. Okay, right. Now, if, however, you do actually want this uh, motor plan that the secondary motor cortex here has actually drawn up to be initiated, what can happen is the secondary motor cortex can activate descending neurons which are going to go into the dorsal striatum, okay? And they will go to a certain portion of the dorsal striatum that is specific for this particular portion of secondary motor cortex, which has the motor plan that you actually want to initiate um, in it, okay? Uh, and um, what's going to happen is these neurons are going to activate uh, neurons in the dorsal striatum. And these neurons in the dorsal striatum are going to be GABAergic neurons, so they're going to be inhibitory. And they're going to send their axons into both the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata. And they will send them into specific portions of the um, globus pallidus internal segment and substantia nigra pars reticulata. And these specific portions will now be inhibited. Okay, because these neurons here are inhibitory. So these neurons now are not going to be functioning in certain portions of the globus pallidus internal segment and substantia nigra pars reticulata, which means now that certain portions of the ventral anterior and ventrolateral thalamic nuclei are no longer going to be receiving the inhibitory input from the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata, which means that now they will turn on, they will fire, and they will give that permissive signal. And the portions of the ventral anterior and ventrolateral thalamic nuclei, which will now be turned on by the lack of the inhibition anymore, will be the portions corresponding to that particular portion of secondary motor cortex rather than the other portions of secondary motor cortex. Okay, so that is the direct pathway. Now, uh, this portion of secondary motor cortex is also going to act on indirect pathway neurons as well. It's going to act by this other pathway known as an indirect pathway. Okay, now what is the purpose of the indirect pathway? Well, the direct pathway is often called the permissive pathway. This is the pathway that actually gives that portion of secondary motor cortex permission to develop its motor plan further and send it to the primary motor cortex to actually be initiated. Okay, the indirect pathway is the pathway by which this secondary motor cortex is going to redouble efforts to make sure that permission is not going to be given to any of the other surrounding areas of the secondary motor cortex. Okay, so it's the way that this portion of secondary motor cortex is going to absolutely make sure that none of the other portions of the secondary motor cortex get permission. Okay, so it's going to activate the inhibition of the permissive signal to all the other portions of the secondary motor cortex. So we're going to redouble efforts to inhibit put any permissive signals uh, going to uh, other portions of the secondary motor cortex so that only the motor plan that was actually supposed to be initiated is initiated. Okay, so I'm going to draw this on a separate diagram. Okay, so here's another piece of paper here. So we'll start out off by drawing the relevant portions of cerebral cortex. So here is our left cerebral hemisphere here. Okay, then we've got our central sulcus here. 
Okay, and let's put on the uh, important areas. So here we have our primary motor cortex here. Okay, here we have our premotor cortex in blue. Okay, our supplementary area, sorry, our supplementary motor area in green. And our dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in turquoise here. Okay, so let's go through uh, the initiation of voluntary movement again. So we start off with the dorsolateral, oops, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex here, which is going to come up with the idea of um, making some movement. So it comes up with the executive decision that we're going to make a movement. It tells the secondary motor cortex, come up with uh, the motor plan for this. Okay, uh, so let's say this portion of the secondary motor cortex is going to be responsible for coming up with this motor plan. Okay, and we know that it's now going to go down and activate the direct pathway. Okay, what we now want to see is how it's going to in, uh, a activate what's known as the indirect pathway. Okay, which is going to make sure that the permissive signal is not going to be given to the other areas of the secondary motor cortex. So, once again, let's draw our lenticular nucleus here. So we've got the putamen out here, which is of course representing the dorsal striatum, and then we've got our two parts of the uh, globus pallidus also shown. Okay, right. So, what's now going to happen is neurons from the, this particular portion of secondary motor cortex, which knows that its motor plan is supposed to be initiated, are going to come down into a certain area of the dorsal striatum. Okay, the same area of the dorsal striatum as we saw in the direct pathway. Okay, the area of the dorsal striatum that is particularly uh, special for that area of secondary motor cortex. Okay, and this time you're going to activate again inhibitory GABAergic neurons, but this time these are going to be inhibitory GABAergic neurons of the indirect pathway, so we could call these indirect neurons if you like, rather than the direct neurons. So these neurons that we saw here, these were the neurons of the direct pathway, whereas now the neurons that we're going to uh, be activating are going to be the indirect neurons. Okay, and we'll talk about further differences between these two neurons later on. Okay, so here then is our uh, indirect neuron. And what's going to happen is the indirect neuron is going to go into a certain area of the external globus pallidus. Okay, and again, of course, you won't just have one of these, you'll have loads of these going into uh, a certain area of the external globus pallidus. And these are inhibitory neurons. Okay, and these are going to inhibit that certain area of the external globus pallidus. Okay, so now the activity of the external globus pallidus neurons are going to go down because we've activated this inhibitory neuron which is now inhibiting this neuron of the external globus pallidus. So what do the neurons of the external globus pallidus actually do? Well, they are going to go into the subthalamic nucleus, which remember is this other nucleus of the basal ganglia, which so far we haven't seen. So we'll put the subthalamic nucleus here, STN for short. Okay, so the GABAergic neurons of the external globus pallidus go into the subthalamic nucleus. Okay, and these are inhibitory neurons as well. So the activity of this neuron has gone down. So let's put arrows here. So this one went up, this one's activity here went up, now this one's activity has gone down. Now usually it would be inactivating neurons in the subthalamic nucleus. Now what do neurons in the subthalamic nucleus do? Well they activate two structures, okay, and they're two structures that we've seen before. They activate the internal globus pallidus and also the substantia nigra pars reticulata, which I'll draw over here. So here's our midbrain, okay, there's our right cerebral peduncle. And now let's put the substantia nigra in. So here is our left substantia nigra pars reticulata here. Okay, so let's just colour a few of these bits in. So we'll have this one in red here. We'll have the putamen in orange here. Okay, we'll have the external globus pallidus, I think, in green here. Okay, that's that bit. And now the subthalamic nucleus is going to send 
excitatory input into both the internal globus pallidus and also into the substantia nigra pars reticulata. Okay, and I'll zoom out in a moment and look at the big picture of this. Okay, but let me just finish the circuit before uh, we look at the big picture. Okay, and then of course we know what the internal globus pallidus okay, does, it's, uh, and also the substantia nigra pars reticulata. They are going to send inhibitory input to these two nuclei. Okay, so to the ventro anterior and to the ventrolateral uh, thalamic nuclei. Okay, which of course contain the permissive signal that goes up to the cerebral cortex. And I won't show you yet where this permissive signal goes. Okay, so I'll put that in a, in, in a moment because that's going to be, of course, very important. Okay, so here then are these inhibitory inputs. So let's colour all of this in. So the subthalamic nucleus then is an important excitatory uh, neurons. Okay, so the subthalamic nucleus contains excitatory neurons, so those are going to be using glutamate. Okay, and of course we know that the internal globus pallidus and the um, substantia nigra pars reticulata are both inhibitory neurons. Okay, right, so let's now put this into a bigger picture, because I admit that this is a difficult pathway to take in. Okay, so, what's happening here? This portion of secondary motor cortex here is sending down excitatory signals into the dorsal striatum, into a particular portion of the dorsal striatum. And here we are activating neurons of the direct pathway, and also neurons of the indirect pathway. So this is an indirect pathway neuron here. Now, these indirect neurons are going to go into a certain area of the external globus pallidus, okay, which is the area, again, corresponding to this portion of the secondary motor cortex. And we're going to inhibit those neurons of the external globus pallidus. So those external globus pallidus neurons are going to stop functioning. Okay? And now what were they doing? Well, they were inhibiting a certain area of the subthalamic nucleus and stopping it from functioning. Now this area of the subthalamic nucleus is going to become active. So it's going to become more active and it's going to send output to areas of the internal globus pallidus and also areas of the substantia nigra pars reticulata. Now, which areas is it going to send output to? Well, it's going to send output to all the areas apart from the area that we saw, well, the areas that we saw in the direct pathway. So remember, in the direct pathway, there were specific areas in the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata, which were the areas which inhibited a certain portion of the ventral anterior and ventrolateral thalamic nuclei, which gave permission to this particular area of secondary motor cortex. We are not going to activate uh, the neurons in those areas, okay? Why not? Well, if we were activating the neurons in those areas, then what would happen? We'd be activating these inhibitory neurons of the internal globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata, and those would inhibit the neurons in these particular areas of the ventral anterior and ventral lateral thalamic nuclei, which give permission to this area of secondary motor cortex. So it would be completely the opposite of what the direct pathway was doing. So instead, what the subthalamic nucleus is now going to do is it's going to, well, what this particular area of the subthalamic nucleus is going to do, which is now active, it's going to send neurons to all the areas of the internal globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata that um, are going to send, well, which are going to be responsible for inhibiting the permissive signal to all the other portions of the cerebral cortex. So we're just, well, the, of the secondary motor cortex, rather. So we're just going to shut down um, the um, permissive signal to the other portions of the secondary motor cortex that we don't want to be active. Okay, right, and we're going to leave the one portion that we do. So really, the subthalamic nucleus is going to uh, send um, activatory neurons into the areas of the internal globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata, which are responsible for inhibiting the permissive signal 
to all the other portions of the secondary motor cortex. Okay, and we're going to now activate those even more than they already were active. And they're now going to inhibit the portions of the ventroanterior thalamic nucleus here in red and the ventrolateral thalamic nucleus, sorry, here in red and then that one was there in purple, um, which um, send the permissive signal to the other portions of secondary motor cortex and therefore you're going to stop any sort of permissive signal going to these other portions of the secondary motor cortex. So I'll draw it going down here maybe to this other portion of secondary motor cortex. And through this way we are going to stop uh, permission going to other portions of the cerebral cortex, uh, well of the secondary motor cortex. Um, apart from the portion of the secondary motor cortex which actually has the motor plan which we want to be initiated. Okay, and we'll come back to this in the next video.